they like, they don't care. 30,000 sat, the last 11,000, all of them were graded weak and very weak in every single subject without exception. If what Father Gerard Panton says is true, and we have no reason to doubt him, then 40% functional illiteracy in this country is an outrage. Every law-abiding, tax-paying citizen then has the right to ask, how is it possible for our children to attend sometimes five, ten years of schooling and emerge functionally illiterate, thousands of them unable to read, write or get a job? Now adults, they are training at Serval common entrance failures and secondary school dropouts. Teacher, you said us coming to school, right? Never say nothing. When it's lunchtime break, go on. Never, you know what I mean? Never give me no confidence in myself. They will just watch you and like, put you in a corner. With large class sizes, that is one. Secondly, we have a system of mainstreaming in our primary schools where children of varying, of varying abilities are placed together in one class. And uh, because of this, it is exceedingly difficult for one teacher standing before a class of 40 or 45 to adequately deal with every child before him. When you try to spread education, and when you try to make sure that everybody gets in, it very often necessitates a lowering of standards. Underqualified teachers working in substandard conditions, mechanical examinations, and uncaring parents are given as reasons for functional illiteracy. Teachers coming in were not, I think, particularly um, you know, qualified to teach in the way the old stages used to be able to teach. The majority of our teachers are well qualified. I will put the charge squarely on the shoulders of parents because one must understand that the learning of a child begins from the time of birth. And in fact, the formative years of the child are between zero and age five. And it is the kind of environment that the parents provide for those children will determine to a very large extent how those children perform in school. My mother never pick up book to say, look, let me see what you do today. I, I never had that. Nobody to push me to show me well. Push me so I learn more. When teachers are forced to operate under conditions that are hazardous to their health and their safety, when teachers are forced to operate in conditions where the schools are dilapidated and run down, where there's an absence of a proper water supply, where the toilet facilities are non-existent in some cases, all of these help to prevent the teacher from performing his duties effectively. If you don't want to learn, that's not my business. It's, it's you to catch afterwards. So they don't really feel, I really have, would ensure that each child leading my class is at least able to read and write. So it's up to you. Specifically, the common entrance exam is held responsible. It became a very mechanical type of examination and the teaching became very mechanical in which many, the, the, many pupils were, were taught to guess rather than to think out solutions to answers. What about missed classes due to teacher boycotts? The presence of a teacher in front of a class does not in its entirety shape the kind of education that child will receive. In their own way, these children, hopelessly misunderstood, explain their route of escape. You know why children listen to that music? Because they have, they see they are alone, right? And they need something to come for them. So they listen to it and get so attracted to it, they get into it, they come like a parent, right? Growing up a child, right? But she never show the child love, but the child get love from someone, the other else, right? And that, make them more attracted to the other person, more than the, than the parents. I like reggae music. I like music, yeah. But the brain won't show me too. They would have been ignorant and lost for life, but for serval. I have a chance in life of learning and going somewhere. Because that education, you're better off dead, and I didn't want to be in that position. Study education first, and then look at study, play after, with anything else after. But without a good education, you can't get jobs no way. The government on the one hand, instead of providing the means whereby teachers could effectively perform their duties, they are cutting back on the budgetary allocations for education, which makes it ten times more difficult. The results of the recommendations of the task force into education may be limited, but perhaps the fact that the government has recognized the gravity of producing a generation of illiterates is a start 
The rest is left up to the goodwill of teachers and the care of parents. Ira Marthu, TV6 News, with a special report.